Hey, what's up there, folks? Welcome to another Train Simulator Classic video. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of things. The main thing is the route itself, which we're currently on, of course. Uh, El Pase Caliente, or in boring English, Hot Pass. This is a fictional, semi-fictional, mainly fictional route by Zawal, the guy that makes a lot of great little uh, bite-sized routes that you can pick up on the workshop, which of course I will link down below under the video itself. Uh, and it's available now, it's been av available for a couple of weeks now if I'm not mistaken, but it's got a, a, a central west coast or even SoCal or NorCal or Idaho or Utah or you know eastern Oregon, eastern Washington feel to it. You can run any damn thing you want on it. I've got uh, some UP and BNSF thrown on here. You can do some short lineage. You can even have it in Old Mexico, which is, you know, would be cool if, if we got some uh, Nacional uh, locomotives on here. Um, what is it? NDME or something like that. Um, so you could do that as well, but uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the map real quick here. So this is the map. You've got anchor points or cities on either end, and this is the pass, and it is a son of a bitch in a good way. It's a nice son of a bitch. It's, uh, it's got 4% grades. And now I haven't asked him, but what I would think that Zaval kind of based this loosely upon is maybe Cajon Pass, but in like a bite size uh, sense, if you will. So anyway, we're going to take a quick look at this here today. The second thing is the BNSF X ATSF 9 pack. Uh, by Manchidu, who also makes a, a lot of very nice packs as well, as far as, uh, you know, some few Salmods and, and uh, reskins and things of that nature. So this is the original with the green and not yellow on here. <laughs> and these are his. He made three of them, and these look fantastic. I love the way these things look, and you're going to get three of them. Not only that, but he's got a custom uh, RS3L horn that's on here as well. It sounds really damn good, and uh, we'll, we'll take a, a look and listen to that. But these are the three you're going to get. This is one, two, three of different uh, variations of weathering, and they fit very nicely on this pass because it, you know, it looks very spicy out here, and these things look like you know, they were ejected from the sun or something uh, after spending a long, long time there. But they look really good, especially the plows. I'm drawn to the plows or pilots. The the rusting and corrosion on here looks bananas good. I love the way these look. And each one, you know, looks slightly different. And, of course, the weathering on the front of the locomotives as well, um, you know, are... are slightly different as well i i don't really know what the angle is i think they're all very weathered just different types of weathering and what's cool about these is they do use uh the searchlight simulations enhancement pack which you can get for these so you can still get the sounds in the bell and, and throw the the horn in there if you don't want the uh, rs3 but the rs3 on here sounds really good but uh these things look pretty damn incredible and they fit on this route very nicely so i thought it was a match made in heaven using these uh with with taking a look at this route here but uh even the weathering on the side and the lettering just looks very nice the coloring looks right you know it's just very baked and almost just like a pink now these things look damn good damn good it's nice to have some weathered locomotives in train simulator i mean there's a lot of great looking locomotives like that baldwin as 616 over there uh, from Diesel Workshop, but that thing is, you know, very fresh looking. I just got it sat here as a yard goat. But, uh, so it's always nice to have some weather locos because they look pretty damn realistic. These are very, very good looking locomotives. I'll link down below where you can go and pick these up as well, and it's easy peasy, you know, copying over a couple of GOs and you're done, zo magunzo, and good to go. All right, so this is the western side of the map, which we're at now. Um, this is kind of the 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 long high speed lazy portion of the map and then you get to this portion and it's down to like 20 25 mile an hour and there's a incline here and i think the steepest is actually over here there's a bridge right here and then you start up the grade here now it's about 25 miles but i took about a 50 car train over this from end to end and it took a good while so it, you know it may not sound like it's that long it's it's 25 miles but uh 
it's Zawal. He has got an eye for creating this stuff. He makes, you know, all of his scenes uh, and his scenery look alive. And the only thing you need for this route, I think, is Feather River Canyon, which you can tell a lot of the rock formations and trees and grasses and things like that uh, are from Feather River. And the U.S. Rail Simulator Pack, or whatever the hell it's called, which pretty much everybody has. So this is kind of just an IM yard. And while I don't really agree with with an im yard the beauty of it is you could change it if you want you could switch this up so like at the other end i got it where it's just you know uh some sort of uh transload for flat cars or bulkheads you know with uh with wood or steel or something like that and then maybe have a small im up here which i guess isn't totally out of the question but there's one of these on both ends of the map but you could you know easily Control E and uh, and edit the uh, route to your liking, if you will. But um, so I just got a couple of cars sat down here, some empties. Uh, got this 616 over here, kind of working like a yard goat. Small town here as well, and it uh, it looks very nice. I mean, the way he's placed all these concrete barriers, the roads, and the the right of way on both sides of the roads look very nice and clean. Just the way cars are placed and parked on the side of the road. There's a, a fairly good size bit of town back here and it goes quite a ways like he doesn't just skimp on uh, the distant scenery I mean hell it looks like it keeps going and then of course he is really good with his rock formations and the placement of rocks and boulders and things like that and the trees now there's all kinds of trees out here so again that's the beauty of it you could have it be wherever the hell you want it to be really but uh, it's it's pretty flat and open on this portion and then when you get down there towards the uh, the ridge line, that's where the, the pass kind of starts. So over here, I got just uh, some coal gone set up. Like this is some kind of, I don't know, you can pretend there's like a, a strip mine back in there somewhere and some kind of underground conveyor. Who knows? You can do whatever you want. It's beauty of train sim and stuff like this. But again, people, workers placed everywhere, cars. Uh, you can have it, you know, semi-modern to modern. Um, just by just by looking at the stuff around here and again, this is a, a fairly sized yard. So just uh, I Don't know maybe some some outbound got some random manifest sitting back here Maybe the yard office back here Some Dudes chilling Chiseling all right, we'll go back here. So this is essentially the end of the map here um, So this is where you know you could continue on if you would like just got a couple of boxcars sitting back here, just some maintenance away type crap, some kind of shed over here. Uh, he's he's got what looks like some nice equipment placed throughout for um, you know defect detector equipment and, and radio towers and stuff like that, which is really nice. I got this long auto rack sitting here, and then of course there's several crossings for uh, you know those additional horny folks like myself that just love tooting that horn and they look very good i mean this is a very clean crossing as well uh these are placed nicely i love the uh the concrete barriers placed all throughout as well because that just looks natural you know looks kind of messy and instead of just having it super clean which i like uh you know proper sign it's got the railroad cross in there the bucks and uh, all kinds of different bushes and trees this route is not um, frame intensive at all uh, depending on how much stuff you put on here I've got like 90% searchlight simulation slash JR uh, rolling stock on here and it's, it's pretty darn smooth but anyway I'm not going to cover the entire map so if you want to go and check it out for yourself you can discover some of the stuff because there are some neat little scenes all throughout so we'll just kind of skip around here
All right, this is the first crossing, uh, level crossing headed eastbound. The yard which we started is just a couple miles that way. You can, yeah, you can see a bit of the train there. So what's that? Maybe like five miles. Um, but again, looks very nice. He's got speed boards all throughout as well as the signaling looks very nice. And they are the appropriate speeds, um, which, you know, I would imagine for, for certain places. But uh, there's nothing right up on a lot of these uh, uh, level crossings here. But there are some towns in the distance and whatnot, which are pretty neat. Again, he's always got an eye that I've felt where he uh, just the way he places things, um, just very akin to just natural daily life and, you know, small middle of nowhere type places uh not super busy um you know just a small town a couple of houses the distant scenery looks very good he's placed trees and rocks all throughout um so there's all kinds of stuff around here we'll go over to the other side where these palm trees are and the gradients as well like a lot of these roads i i found uh running the uh the route the other day a lot of these roads look cool as well they're nice and hilly they have nice smooth gradients they're not super jaggy this actually goes up and over the railroad crossing which is fairly common i mean it's fairly common around here where i live and i think in a lot of the u.s they're not you know a lot of these level crossings aren't just flat you know across because they got to go up and over the tracks right so it's it's actually a nice hump here which is kind of cool you don't actually see a whole hell of a lot of that in train sim in the north american routes uh looks like we got a junkyard over here got a digger and a backhoe over here doing some workage dump truck little strip mall supermarket some semi trucks over there nice little town you know just the way cars are placed they're not just cookie cutter boom 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 one in a row they look very nice i'm not sure what the hell that is what on earth yeah okay <laughs> don't know what that is nice neighborhood back here with very expensive watered lawns all right let's keep on keeping on yeah those are weird i've never seen those before is that some kind of texture thing yeah, missing texture. What the hell are those from? Anyway, they're far off. It's just a, a taxi. It's no biggie. All right, we'll keep heading towards the mountains yonder. All right, so we're a bit farther eastward. You are starting a bit of your climb. There's going to be some uh, some mountains here. Uh, there's a little town over here. And one of the things I was talking about with the roads and the rolling kind of nature to them, uh, they just look pretty cool like this right here. And over here, there's even, you know, a, the speed limit board um gas stations again with these concrete barriers i don't know what it is about concrete barriers i just think they look good in this game here we go rolling hill road i've seen nothing else like this that looks this good as far as like a natural looking road that rolls up and down like that a aside from like powder river basin when you're over in a sand hill area it's you know it's got these roads like this which look very cool and this is way off the railroad i mean the railroad itself is over there hugging that mountain there so uh got some kind of radio tower and water tower over here but the uh, the sceneries again are just very nice it looks organic and random got another scrap yard over here yeah 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 looking good all right let's continue east all right, we're ever closer to the pass itself. Now, there is a slight incline here going left to right, uh, kind of where it begins, and the mountains are over there. But this is just another crossing that I wanted to uh, to show again in which how smooth and natural that looks up and over the railroad tracks. Got some more equipment right here, probably something to do with the defect detector, the signal boxes. There's a nice radio or uh, microwave tower up here, whatever the hell they are. Um, which was placed next to it as well, which looked very good. That's just that's just nice looking. Looks very nice. And there's a little town down here that just kind of caught my eye the first time I saw it. It's like I don't know. It's what I would think if like the main town and Red Dead Redemption were modernized. It just it has that look to it. It's out west somewhere. You got that little old church off to the side, one horse town kind of thing. Got the gas station. 
People spreading the gossip. What's Billy Bob been up to? Oh, I don't know. You know, that whole thing, small town. But, um, yeah, just a nice little town here. Got a water tower over there. This goes out to the highway. This is the main highway that kind of follows the line itself, which, uh, you know, a lot of places like this do because, you know, the road and the, the railroad line were kind of built one and the same. I don't know if that's the right sign for that, but whatever. Maybe maybe he accidentally put that there. I don't think there's another road over here. Let's see if there's anything this way. Oh, nice. You got some more old uh, just dilapidated building stuff over here. A lot of houses back here. He puts stuff way, way off the, uh, the tracks themselves. A couple more houses down here. Very nice. Very nice. All right, we'll keep on. All right, a bit further east. Uh, the incline is definitely beginning, or decline, depending on which way you're coming from. This is the first of a couple of bridges here, which just pass over the highway. Uh, looks like a truck stop over here, which is another, you know, cool little touch. A lot of tractor trailers over here. A couple of coppers, smokies, the diner, which, you know, of course, is supposed to be the gas station, I guess. Another gas station over here. So that's cool. That's a nice little touch. Truck stop by, by the uh, the highway there. And then you can tell the elevation is starting to get uh, quite elevated, I guess you could say. But it's this is a nice scenic area here as well. And there's quite a few curves. Uh, there's one pretty good sized curve right there. And then there's another one that curves keep keeps kind of curving around to the right there. And then it starts to get a little tricky, a little slower speed. Got some more equipment boxes down here, 25 speed boards. So yeah, this is, this is a lot slower through here. This is like a dry gulch here, dry creek bed, which again looks very nice. The way the bushes and rocks and boulders and things like that are placed all through there. You got the highway over here, which went under the uh, the railroad back there uh, with a couple of buildings and whatnot. And then it's a big old sharp curve to the right, 15 mile an hour speed limit board. And this is kind of like your your helper station. So if you want to run helpers, this is going to be the helper station uh, or turnaround or whatever the hell you want to do on the west side of the route. So you got some fuel tanks here, a uh, couple of workers, vehicles, things like that, people chilling. Another tractor. It's like they're changing out some ties or something. Just little things like this that look good. Like, I can't just imagine if all this stuff was gone, if it would still look this good, you know. Just just the trackage through here. Got the American flag. America! Another little uh, spur right there. They can back in. Got some workers there. And it's definitely an incline through here. Again, the scenery looks very nice. A lot of it, to me... With stuff like this and routes for North American stuff in, uh, in train sim. While the textures don't look fantastic in there, there haven't been any good, uh, like, new ground textures made in ages. I don't, I don't know what the last one was, if there was any made in, you know, any recent years. But the way he places stuff right next to the right-of-way uh, or the rail bed looks, you know, just very clean. It's not just like a sharp line straight down the railroad tracks. You know, there's grass and rocks and things like that there's you know the odd oil barrel and just random crap sitting everywhere which just looks nice and natural so here's the first big bridge which again very scenic area it's just nice to sit here take pictures watch trains climb over it that looks good man so wall has got an eye for making these little roots i'd love to see him make like a fully fleshed you know large root and just see what the thing would look like. But it's uh, it's got some nice distant scenery there. It's like some of the mountains are um, buttes or whatever they're called, mesas. But uh, your climb begins now. So this, this is steep as hell. And it will be a challenge. Which is part of the fun of this route. Because I've been trying to figure out what I can and can't get away with. And I've kind of gotten to a good point where I'm uh, I'm I'm crawling with uh, about 40 cars and four SD 40 dash twos, and I'm sitting at about 10 to 12 mile an hour upgrade with engines just rah, you know, roaring. 
which is pretty realistic and, and pretty cool. So you can mess around with, uh, you know, whatever, see what you like. Throw some steam in here. Um, what ifs? But this is this is a steep bit. This is the pass. Kind of the whole thing is a pass, obviously. But this is essentially like the main part of the pass. This this uh, knob, what they call like the bare top of a mountain here. Uh, it curves around here to the right. Some more equipment, speed boards. And even down in there looks very nice as well. I get like a, a an Eastern Washington or Eastern Oregon vibe here the most, and it uh, it looks pretty nice. So here's the curve. It's almost a horseshoe curve. I mean, it kind of is. Um, so that's pretty cool. We can take some some neat pictures up here and watch some trains just get destroyed by this gradient. I mean, you can tell just looking. So like that's level, right? And then it just goes straight down. So you really got to watch what the hell you're doing. We'll keep on going up here. And then there's another uh, station up here. Um, another pocket for helpers. So we'll go ahead and scooch on over that way. All right, so this is looking back west, and this is the crazy, like, horseshoe curve type bit, if you will, here. Uh, and then there's the bridge back there. So we'll keep on scooching this way. This is still uphill, and it's still violently uh, upgrade. And it'll flatten out just around this curve up here to the left. And there should be a small station here. Pocket. Yeah, here it is. The big signal gantry. Got a radio tower. Just some random stuff laying around. The barrel. The uh, the ties. Water tank. A couple of guys bullshitting. Some more barrels. Either that or just uh, a sighting. You know, trains passing. Going uh, north or south, depending on. Down here as well, got another little shack with a tower there, a signal gantry. I just got some tanks sitting here for whatever the reason. Maybe they're refilling that for the helpers, and whatnot. Got the uh, the office sitting over there, and then it's it's a bit flat again. So it's almost like this is a a higher plane, if you will, on this side of the map, where that kind of seems to me beyond that is a bit lower. So we'll keep scooching on this way. And then this, I believe, starts the downward portion till you get uh, all the way to the eastern end of the map. So we'll just fly down here real quick, and it begins to get violent right. There's like these two funky rock formations. Yeah, there it is. Look like two Simpson character heads or something. Yeah. That... That was kind of my uh, the thing I notated when it starts to get super crazy going uh, eastbound here. Yeah, so this yeah this is like three point nine to four percent through here. Again, distance scenery looks very nice. The you know it's a shame the mountains kind of look the way they do in the distance, but that's just a you know train sim limitation so to speak. And uh, you know you could tune that out with weather and graphical settings and things like that. There's a little reservoir sitting over here. Some very sketchy looking water I wouldn't drink that it's another funky looking rock formation over here as well kind of cool another one there on the left got another little hamlet up here on the right go over and check that out real quick I don't know if I've looked at this one got another church not a whole lot going on small sleepy desert town but again, the sceneries, man, like that's just, 
Yeah, it's pretty. It's cozy. Very cozy. Another crossing. Dirt road crossing. And again, it's just super clean. Super, super clean. I mean, the tracks are like embedded in the dirt, you know, from trucks and cars and whatnot, bringing dirt, you know, with their tires across the tracks themselves. It just looks damn good. That's I'm a sucker for a good-looking level crossing in, uh, in Trains and Classic. Got another speed board there, so it's back on up to 40, so it's not slow all the time. And, you know, you can go at every speed you want, but good luck keeping the train upright, you know, going around some of these curves, some more equipment right there. This is the violent downhill portion, as you can see. I mean, look at that. It is a roller coaster, essentially. It's a nice sharp right turn right down here. Kind of flattens out right about at this speed board here, or it starts to anyway. Got some more Ponderosa Pines. A couple of houses over there. Another crossing here. Again, this is just like, uh, you know, middle of nowhere, kind of double track out in the boonies crossing here, which is just up over the tracks, which again looks nice. It's not super clean. It's just, it looks good. I love stuff like that. Some more equipment there, speed boards. A couple of Jershua trees. And the majestic bridge on this route right here. This bridge is incredible. This is a cool-ass looking bridge. So this is not a dry gulch. It very much has water in it. I don't know if it's supposed to be a river or a reservoir, but uh, it's big. And it's, you know, trains and bridges are like pizza and cheese. You know, same deal. It's, uh, it's just a big bridge, and it looks very cool. Very, very cool. can find some nice angles all around that. Got a big old butte. I like big buttes, and I cannot lie. Had to do it. Yep, over there. Some nice rock formations as well. And then we'll continue on down there to the farthest. Uh, where are we going? East. Eastern side of the map. All right, and we're at the farthest um, eastern portion of the map here. We're just about here. You can see the highway splits there. You got the, the river over here in the distance. And then this is the other yard, which, again, you can kind of make it whatever the hell you want. It's a big old scrap yard over here, which, again, like, just making, like, just stopping and thinking about creating this stuff. Just making this scene here had to take quite a while. Uh, just placing all this scrap down here, the cars, the, the tire piles, uh, the way cars are sitting on top of one another like that. That's, you know, places like this do stuff like that. They don't just place them down in a nice, neat line. You know, they got to they gotta maximize the space that they got to work with on their property. So they'll, they'll stack stuff like that. It looks good. It looks very nice. Got a little forklift over there, dump truck. 
Got the uh, the scrapped out containers ready to go, ready to sell. A couple of pieces of heavy equipment back there. Just a, a neat little area. And this is just like the, I guess, the, the railroad property over here. Um, maybe some sort of maintenance house over here. We got the office over here. The crew quarters or whatever. Got your uh, your tanks there for your diesel. A couple of workers chilling, just you know, crap laying everywhere, which is cool. A uh, couple of helper engines here can have um, you know you could make this the helper pocket if you wanted because essentially the almost the whole thing is is up or down. The the western side of the map is a bit more flat. Uh, so if you just want to haul ass in the the flat land, you're gonna want to shoot for the western side, but. Either that or just a couple of yard goats sitting here. So, got some uh, some stock just chilling in the yard. And again, it's it's set up like it's an IM facility. Um, but again, you could do whatever the hell you wanted with it. I just don't I just don't see myself using it as that. Being that you know there would be two this close to one another. But uh, it is a fictional map, so it's not it's not wrong, you know, because it's fictional. But uh, Got a little depot over here. Some dudes filling up a truck with some pallets. Very industrial looking area. Uh, but what I was kind of using back in here, I've got the uh, the JR and searchlight cars here. Some flat cars and bulkheads. Uh, you know, filling with steel and, and pipe and wood and stuff like that, which you could very much do. Just get rid of that, you know, that crane down there. You'll be good to go. Other side of the office here. Maybe like security office or something. Drive up in here. Something like cat. Everything's signaled. You got all your dwarf signals down here. Little town over here. Very nice. Very nice. Got some dirt roads. What's this copper doing? Oh, that must be the police. Them popos. Must be the police station. And then this is, there's the same highway that continues down again with the rolling hills. And then this is essentially the, uh, this is the train I have set up to go um, eastbound. But this is the edge of the map through here. And I like this scenery through here. This little tiny bit of scenery through here really, really uh, gets me all hot and bothered. Just the, the way that it's kind of up off the level ground and it's uh you know the road bed itself is elevated a lot of rocky outcroppings and things like that because you can see you know up here you're about halfway up the trees here so i like the way this looks i'd like to see some some you know some sort of line that looks like this here um in its entirety almost this looks cool and then there's a uh, a gulch through here which looks very nice this would have been something cool to see maybe like I don't know, midway through the map or something like that. But this area back here looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then it essentially dead ends down here. And then it's just super scary Saharan Desert No Man's Land. But uh, that's it, guys. That is El Pase Caliente or Hot Pass, a free wear route on the Steam Workshop, which I'll link below as well as Monchito's. Uh, X A T S F dash nueves or dash nines. If you want to go and check those out, so another little gem from the wall. Just to uh, whet your appetite until the the next uh, route comes along, whenever that may be. But it's it's good as always. I don't know of anything that he's made that's that's not good, and it's modern. You know, a lot of his his later routes were uh, you know set late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, so it's modern. So you can do whatever the heck. You won't. But that's it for now, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time.